clear. I don't have to keep defending my Because of uh, the, some history, the history of uh, where my involvement in, in the business of politics or even being a leader started from. It started from, maybe it should not have been there, it started from uh, the situation I was in even from childhood. And I grew up, participated in the struggle, and we were just looking for a country, for rights as other people have. And that's how I got involved in the armed struggle. First it was in Uganda, then Rwanda, then... I wasn't doing that to become president. I never even dreamt I would be president until it actually happened. In fact, even when there was opportunity to be president, I chose not to be. In 94, uh, when we, whatever happened had happened, my party, which had taken it for granted that I was going, therefore, to take the helm and, and be the leader, I told them they needed to look for somebody. I told them that I wasn't prepared for it. It's not even what all along I was fighting for. So that's how they chose another president. And at that time, I became vice president and uh, minister of defense. So later on, the president who had been elected then, uh, selected to, take, to be there in my place, had problems with the parliament. They impeached him and removed him. Then they came back to me and said, this time if you are not going to say no. I said, fine. And That's I think already had some training. I had already, yeah. I had already found some bearing. <laughs> yes. So anyway, so many things happened after that until recent. So succession is going to come out, out, out of what is happening in my country, uh, where we have come from, where we are, and uh, up to a point, in fact, today it is as if I have been left to, to decide when I should go. And I want to assure the lady there that making that decision will not be very difficult. I, 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 want, I want to have to, if, if people were to tell me to stay and uh, I'm not convinced for example, if I had reached a stage, if I were to reach a stage where, and I won't reach that stage, where people would tell me to, to continue, when I am uh, one person who, uh, let me not offend people, but <laughs> I, I know when I still have some strength to do what they expect yeah. me to do, yeah. And uh, when it is at that point uh, that uh, I, I feel I can't do much for them, which they expect from me, I just tell them no. But I tell them even before they tell them to continue. And uh, when it comes to that, even if they insist, I also insist on going. So that's how it will operate. But like, one question here, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, and Please, I'm, I'm, I'm not flattering you because I don't flatter people. Yeah, sure. But you, uh, you really did a lot for this country. And people admire the delivery. Uh, uh, what you have made out of this country. People admire that. Then you have been also a great African leader, paying attention to the African issues, whatever it is. Uh, with international, you know, co you know, corruption issues, justice issues, climate issues, whatever. Uh, you are one of few leaders who are really African leaders. We have some nationalist leaders here and there, 
but not many of them are Africans. Because I think if you're African, you need to pay attention to all of Africa to earn the name African leader. And, uh, but that's going to create a problem because your brand became mixed with Rwanda brand. Would that make it very difficult for your successor to come and fill in your shoes now? You, you've been seen now like a father of the nation. You know everybody in the world. You, 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 uh, you, know, you led the country. You managed this transformation. Would that not be a difficult tra transformation uh, when on, you pass to successor? Depending on how you look at it. First of all, everyone has their shoes. Yeah. These guys, I, I, will have the, I, I didn't have to fill anybody's <laughs> shoes. So yeah. I'm sure there are people out there who don't have to fill my shoes, who will do the service required for, for this yeah. country differently. They, they don't have to fill my shoes. They have to do what they need to do for the country and starting where, from where the country is. I started from a different place. So people starting from uh, where the country is, I think are there, they will be found, and uh, they, they will build on what exists and maybe continue the brand or take it in a different direction, but nonetheless a good brand. Can we I ask want you, it to be a good brand. Can I brand. ask you another personal question? Okay, you get fed up of this, you know, get tired. Sure. Especially, working with the African Union is very tiring. Uh, it is. I, I, I am a witness <laughs> to that. <laughs> so what, 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 is, what is Paul Kagame's future plans? I mean, you're going to take up golf, you're going to take up fishing. So if you come time and say, guys, OK, you, you take this. What, what you, you're going to start a foundation? You're going to go to the global stage, do something there? or what? This is a personal question. What, 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 what do you want to do in the future? I have many things to do. One, I will try and be supportive to the one who brings his shoes to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely want that person to succeed. OK. So you for, need to, for, for my you country. owe something for Yes, for, absolutely. Yeah. There's no question I have to. Right. I owe that. I, continue to give whatever little that will be remaining in, in me yeah. to, to make sure I move forward. The second, I'm a, a, a very happy person, satisfied person. I have uh, my family, which has always comforted me. I always feel back, to, fall back to it. For when I have all these frustrations, uh, I, <laughs> and they, they, they give me the support required. And, yeah friends and, 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 and so on. Maybe in the near future, I mean, who knows? With the children, you later on have grandchildren. So this is going to be a lot of uh, fun and... So no golf for you or no? Golf, well, some of them may take me there. But okay, okay, yes. take me. Yeah. <laughs> Because you have wonderful greens here. You yes, know, but third, <laughs> third uh, I have always wanted um, time for, to myself. Yeah. I want to almost go back to school, let me put it that way. I always want to. You don't envisage a role in the United Nations no, or international, no. you, you if, had enough. Even if they bribed me, I wouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this one. No. <laughs> No, not right. after this one. <laughs> not after. Right. Uh, any question? More questions, please. Uh, okay, madam. Question, please. Huh? I know. I'm Joel Taylor, Vice President of Liberia. And I have one question. As chair of the African Union, you now sit over a body that is 100% male. What are your plans for making sure the gender equity rules and programs you set here are now over the continent because we feel a little bit left out. What are you going to do as chair of the AU? Well, there, there is uh, 
Only so much I can do, but, but one has to, uh, 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 it's a good thing that at least uh, I can say we have started from home. We try to do some of the things that relate to what you have just said here at home. And secondly, we can keep talking to one another across uh, uh, our continent to really encourage to show that there is a need. I mean, I think people are understand the need only when it comes to doing it. Some di difficulty uh, develops, which I don't understand, but we can work together, sharing experiences, showing the need for things to change across, uh, to give uh, women their place uh, they, they deserve. And, and, and it's not really to give it to them. It's, uh, it's not like we are handing anything to them or doing a favor to them. It's just realizing that it is important for all of us, not just for women, but for men as well. So this helps the understanding, but the practice as we have it here in our country can help uh, us to make any input required to that conversation and that's where, and even raising it, the discussion at the level of the African Union and putting it high on the agenda is, is, is very critical so that uh, we don't have one vice president across the continent. We had one uh, president, the former president of Liberia, Johnson Sallif, who still had one. We, we need two, three, four, maybe. So we, 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 we need to do uh, what needs to be done. I can only promise to, make, to put an effort in it, but we can't change things. Uh, uh, it was mentioned to me that uh, this is the, the African Union declared this as a year of fighting corruption. Uh, is that true? Is it, yes. Somebody yeah. said this year of corruption. Mm -hmm. So what, what concrete steps, you know, not slogans, but what, what, what are the African Union going to do to say we are going to find corruption? Are they going to agree something concrete? Uh, they're going to participate on, there's a number of conventions, a number of uh, things are out, they're going to say, let's sign yes. this stuff, or? You know, I have started the thinking that even slogans are useful. At least they remind people. Oh. Yes, so to begin with, slogans, okay. Yeah. But immediately, and more importantly, we need to go beyond that, right. which you are saying. So we, we have at least identified it as one of the things we have to deal with. It has been put out there. We even uh, appointed a, a head of state of a very important country, Nigeria, to champion that. Yeah, Buhari. And, uh, yes, mm. President Buhari. Yeah, right. And uh, he came up with the different proposals of what needs to be done at a national level as well as continental level. You see, I had people discuss uh, that topic when we came in the uh, panel. I think it was a very brilliant uh, uh, discussion. They raised very important uh, points. First, to, to ask the question whether corruption is African, is not to excuse corruption, but it is to put the record straight. And straight in the two senses, one, for sure, corruption is a very serious problem in Africa. Uh, but it doesn't help to, to deal with it by calling it African. So we, corruption is, doesn't matter. In fact, most of these, uh, corrupt cases, corruption cases in Africa, the, the major ones that we know across the continent are, are, are shared between Africans and the others from outside. There's no doubt about it. Mr. 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 President, in our foundation, so, 
and we speak a lot in Europe with America and, and we engage with all those people. On the issue of corruption, we argue that for every single corrupt African leader or African official, there is a dozen yes. corrupt business people sitting in the room, honored, you know, in Europe, United, and we say, who's gonna deal in, you dealing with these guys? Those are partners in crime. Yes. And nobody, there's no light shed on those guys. And we say, we cannot deal with, with governance in the public sector mm -hmm. without dealing with governance in the private sector also. That's correct. You need to enforce also rules there. Absolutely correct. We challenge Europeans, and people need to know that. Corruption has been legal in Europe until the year 2000. Are you aware of that? It's been actually tax deductible. Tax deductible. You call it business expenses. Okay? And that's my CFO. I'm a businessman, you guys, you know that. You know, it's called, my, that's my CFO advice to me. It said, you know, if you want to pay any money, Mr. Ibrahim, is, uh, it was French actually. Maybe that explains it, anyway. And, <laughs> He said, you know, you, 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 it's business expenses, legal, tax deductible. Under pressure from OCD, they made it illegal. Became crime. And we challenge European, we say, how many people in Sweden, in Norway, in Denmark, in Germany, in Greece, in Italy, have been tried for corruption in Africa? None. I, I remember once we, ha we were having a, a meeting with the Chancellor, or Chancellor of uh, Germany, Madame Merkel, and I was complaining about corruption and said, look, what we're doing with Siemens at that time. I said, actually, Siemens has been tried for when they tried to, de to, to, to destroy the fabric of, 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 of the German society because when they use it, Trade union and you know the, the, the directors of the board from trade union. It was what is happening in Germany. Siemens was never tried for what is committed in Nigeria and other places, which we all people know. Yeah, many cases. Exactly. So nobody has been tried for any corruption in Africa. And we ask the question: Does it mean there's no corruption in Africa? So what you're talking about? Or there is corruption? But we will not try our business people mm -hmm. even when it is illegal. Sure. So there is a lot of hypocrisy here and people need to confront that. Yes. And that is really important to confront it. That's right. But on top of that, again, as I said, we can't sound like we are excusing anything sure. here. So on our side, we need to do what we need to do. We also can't keep allowing our countries even giving services to our own people. Uh, it was again said here very eloquently. I mean, somebody, the service that should be free, everybody expects that. Uh, yes. Yes. And if, even at the airports, uh, whether it is immigration, it is a policeman, and, uh, a traffic policeman, or handling another case, or. Yeah. Or, or even in our own ministries, people to do what they were point, appointed to do, what they were put there to do, they want to do it only if this is a relative or this is a money paid by somebody. It's, yeah. It should be completely unacceptable, and there are ways to do it. One way is to insist on accountability. Yes. And when you go for accountability, don't go for these small you know, you, you, you start punishing drivers and uh, uh, clerks and, yeah, yeah. and then the big guys Yeah, you steal, you steal chicken, you go to prison, you chop uh -huh. off your hand. Exactly. Yeah, you steal the whole country. Why don't you yeah. go for the big guys? Yeah. You need to, <laughs> yes, you need no, to. This are, but I mean, people also saw, think there is also low hanging fruits, easy uh, to, 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 to do. Uh, we have been campaigning all over the world about the issue of uh, trustee companies and uh, you know ownership. 
beneficial ownership because a class of companies which you don't know who owns it. Yeah. And that is the vehicle for corruption because you said you steal money, where you bought it, you bought it in... in, in and That's some true. countries started to, 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 to do that, to, to decriminalize, you know, criminalize that or to ban it. Yes. And uh, that can be a simple suggestion for the African countries. Yes. Yes. Why don't you, if you want to find corruption, why don't you abolish trustee companies if you have any class? Uh, because then there's no place to hide. The, it starts at a national level. There are certain things expected that were spelled out in, in what uh, President Buhari presented that we need to look at uh, as even a nation states, what we need to be doing to do so, that, yeah. to, to fight corruption. But then there is also what you know operates at a continental level, yeah. and these are some of the things that should be coming up. It's, it's not... Uh, uh, something that fixes corruption overnight right. or, or it will be improved, it will be right. need to be talked about, people will have to be mobilized and as you said, I the civil know. society gets involved in that, the media gets involved in that, you know. but then uh, national governments have responsibility to ensure right. that actually this functions. Right. And also I think uh, rule of law is also important. Yes. We had a discussion before about uh, Tanzania. Mm. And uh, there was some concern about the strange behavior of uh, the government of Tanzania. And uh, we said really need to be frank about all these issues. Uh, we salute, of course, the strong feeling of the president of Tanzania about corruption. We think that's wonderful. But in execution, that should happen through a process. Yeah, that's it's not uh, uh, a single man act above, above the law because point. that gives a bad name for fighting corruption. That's a it fair point. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Institutions, we need to build the institutions, rule of law, and I think that is uh, really uh, quite important. Uh, we have Salim here. I hope he pass this message to his, to his president, and uh, we hope to see you back again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, look, the president has been, because he gave me 30 minutes, it's already one hour now. No and I, I don't want to abuse, uh, really, uh, uh, his hospitality. Uh, can I take one or two sure, questions? Sure, sure, no problem. Question, please. Who is that, sorry? Okay, go ahead. Hamdi Osman. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. President, most of the uh, leader in, uh, in our century now that we see have done what you have done in the last 17 years, something to be very proud of, is the, what I like to know today, Rwandan who just got married and have a child, 30 years from now, what Rwanda is going to look like in your eyes? I want you to look into the future and look backwards rather than stand in, in future and look forward. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look back to the future and just tell me what it's going to look like. And for Mr. Mo, I think I recommend just... I'm add, not taking questions. No, okay? no, no. A recommendation yeah. for you... I'm you, only asking questions. Only a recommendation for you to build more red sculptin in Africa so that way we can be able to catch up. <laughs> That's too expensive. <laughs> well, just uh, looking at where we have been uh, 24 years ago, and where we are now. Maybe in another 30 years, if we can be five to 10 times better than where we are now. Switzerland of Africa? No, Rwanda of Africa. We look like it. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> like you have the mountains, you have yes, the lakes. Yes, yeah. the, the, the Rwanda that is uh, yes, developed, stable, where the citizens feel proud of being Rwandans and uh, part of the, and contributing to the well-being of the rest of the world. This is what I want to say. Uh, yes, there's somebody. Uh, Let's have... Um, 
the lady there maybe. And then uh, there is a gentleman in green. If we do quickly. Two people and that's it. It's unfortunate. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for picking me. <laughs> my name is Omonigo. Okay, my name is Omonigo Yoma Brown from Nigeria. So my question to you is, um, you made mention about um, the fact that when we're getting funding for, for, for the AU from um, external donors, um, there's so much we can do with regards to pushing the interest of um, Africans, right? So, and you also mentioned about getting the African nations to fund the AU. You talked about 0.02%, um, so I wanted to ask, is this funding going to be equal across all African countries? And if it's not going to be equal, would there be still be that risk of um, a country contributing more, getting its interest um, represented more than other countries that can contribute more? Yes, uh, we we'll go step by step. I think we, we cannot eliminate uh, completely one country having an influence over the other, even if they were not paying for them, they, they can still do that. That will happen. Uh, that, that, that's not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is making sure that as a continent, when we can contribute for our own activities of the African Union, we should do that so that out of the continent, there is not this kind of funding that will help us do what we want to do, but get beholden or tied to these uh, interests of uh, outsiders who are paying for us. There is not even a need for people to pay for us anyway. There is no basis. There is no good reason. I have been telling my people here, you know, when we are trying sometimes to be provocative so that they really work hard and see things, we keep asking ourselves why the rest of the world keep giving us uh, aid. Uh, aid is good, and I have been misunderstood to have uh, meant something else, but that's not what I meant. What I meant was, first of all, as a proud people, Rwandans or Africans, why should citizens of other countries keep footing your bills for everything? Yeah. Why? Why don't you want to be like them? Exactly. You know, so, that's, that's, yes. so, so yeah. if we can uh, use that aid to put ourselves a family on our feet, and we need to, yes. yes, as quick as we can, then that is the best way. I think that's so the, the, the 0 0.2 percent will not put us at the same amount for every country, but it will put us proportionate to, to be proportionate to the size of the country the indeed. GDP so, or, yeah. so, so some will pay more than others, yeah. but more or less what you are paying is equal to your standing uh, on the continent in terms of your capacity to pay. That's the, the fairness of it. Uh, but to make sure that you are paying and you know it has come from you, has, has uh, you know, maybe it reduces uh, the influence even on the one who is paying more because he's paying more for more people. You are paying yeah, less for less. Historically, there was five countries being probably 75% of the budget right. already is there because bigger countries contribute more, yeah. it's normal. It's normal, it's yeah. very normal, so we are right. not the same size anyway, but that doesn't mean you have to always fall yeah. under the influence of every no. one who is bigger than you. You selected the gentleman at the back. Yes, the gentleman. Some gentleman at the back selected. Please, your Thank name. You. I am called Tanda, I'm a Cameroonian, and I work with the International Crisis Group. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for selecting me. 
My question is because as an African, I'm really worried about the African Union and African integration. So as chairman of the African Union, considering that some months ago, the Peace and Security Council voted to send some armed men into Burundi to prevent escalation into a civil war. But heads of states came in and annulled it. Don't you think that is, there is too much power uh, vested on heads of state and there is a need for some organs like the Peace and Security Council to be empowered in that way they can be more neutral compared to the heads of states that we have in Africa. <laughs> if, you, if, you think, if, if you don't think so, I would like to know why. If you think so, I would like to know if you plan to do something as chairman of the African Union. If yes, how? Thank you. Well, this is five questions. <laughs> I think there is always going to be too much to, 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 to handle, to deal with things that conflict, but we have to choose carefully how we proceed because some of these things are going to be there anyway, naturally. Uh, even if you say the, the Peace and Security Council does this, Peace and Security Council is drawn from among Africans, from African countries. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you will find that anyway, even those you use from our continent have links with their countries and therefore they'll even be influenced by the policies of uh, their countries or their leaders uh, and so on and so forth. So it's not like you have a Peace and Security Council like a machine that has no connection with uh, this influence we are talking about. But the most important thing is these institutions provide forums where people exchange views and we have uh, guidelines, we have uh, uh, things that uh, operate to the extent that there is an outcome that is intended to address whatever problem that is there, even if it may not happen uh, uh, the way we would want it. Uh, or, or at least all of us would want it or to address the problem. For example, when uh, that problem we talked about of Burundi came up, of course everybody knew there was a problem to, to be dealt with, uh, except maybe Burundi, which was saying it has no problem. But therefore, different opinions for different reasons will come up as to how people think this uh, uh, challenges should be uh, addressed. Some may act for sending their troops, others would say, no, let's wait, let's uh, allow the region to, you know, massage the problem and, uh, yeah. and, and find a way of addressing it with the uh, minimum cost, sometimes in terms of uh, it, 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 Minimum cost may involve trying to, uh, in a sense, I don't know whether you should use that, appease the powers that be yeah. that are actually behind <laughs> uh, some of the problems. It's like, uh, again, the sovereignty issues come in, then, uh, and when, when one head of state is talking about uh, sovereignty of another country, is thinking about his it's own sovereignty, yes. about himself, and yeah. so these are things that come into play that you just uh, can't cut through so easily like you would do, or, or like everyone would wish. So there are all these considerations, uh, but uh, that's the way the world operates. No, thank that's you the very way much, uh, Mr. President, and I hope to you join me for thanking Mr. President for a very candid. The US, when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 
The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We, the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. They think getting rid of a president will take care of the problem. Far from it. That president is just going to be replaced by another one who is going to equally suffer from the same difficult environment to work in. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day in broad daylight. I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. The same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK-16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? Arm young people, drag them up, and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away, so they come behind and do their illegal mining. We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering. We pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. We were singing, when you were singing, the masters of the field were coming. We who are young boys are coming. The masters of the field are coming. We who are young boys are coming. To win the race, to win the race, we trust in God, we trust in God. To win the race, we trust in God. And that's for, and that's for Opoku, right? Masters mm -hmm. are coming. Masters are coming. Mm -hmm. Masters are coming to win the race. Oh, 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 oh. Masters are coming. And then they will sing. Prepare the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prepare the world. Yeah. Then we go more. Then we'll keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Then we will sing. Ah, when they tire, then we'll come in. Mm -hmm. Diplo, Owens. Diplo, Owens. I win again. We have to win the race and take a cup. We are the masters of the field and best athletes, famous to all and decent boys. How would you prove? Then they will start. I've been quiet. 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 Uh, e levy, e levy, e levy, Kasana, Yakasagana, Ubiarika, e levy, and she says, Me, tea bing me, ni e levy. Because e levy problem, no, a e yes simple. Now, Ghana government is on Peser or Tiasse, in Tine, a bet, so much then. No, what Tiasse, ye, I was here for twenty twenty. IMF, ma Ghana, one billion dollars, billion with a B. Same year, no World Bank, ma Ghana, four hundred and thirty million dollars. Nina for COVID. Every year, you know, in twenty twenty one, no IMF for some ma Ghana one billion dollars. Bill, one billion with a B. 
Now, World Bank Kasama Ghana, 130 million dollars. In 2021, no, so I 1 billion, 130 million year. If he World Bank buy any IMF buy, no, no, we say post COVID rejuvenation program, say what be my young economy, no, so into no World Bank, the IMF, this is Ghana, Ghana, Ghana government, a core Bank of Ghana, Koyi 20 billion cities, say COVID in T. Now, which are for World Bank, I'm with 2 billion. Uh, I am a farmer with two billion. World Bank Amamo, five hundred and sixty million dollars for COVID. I know on some Musan call Bank of Ghana could eat twenty billion CDs. Say COVID in tea. Say I see can we move home content trying yet. And I won't move. We move yet. Baby, I will be for Ghana. E levy tax. We call ports. E levy. We call airport. We call hotels. But they are to to be bearer so Ghana. E levy, e levy, e levy. Says he can hear na fa petrol. E levy. Uko union ma port. E levy. Says he can hear na fa na. Inti se ne government person or chile yeng se Ghana fu ebi a ya juna ne nye jumenti na ode sa e levy nere ba. Yeng su ya pesi ya chile government se enye se ya juna nye jumo ye hu ne kusono ni e jai amano. If you say, who per se, who nya, he levy, young, yeah, yeah, responsible citizens, young per se, yeah, 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 stand by, yeah, you know, okay, car, yeah, train fire, yeah, or no, okay, see, yeah, yeah, responsible citizens, right? Into, yeah, yeah, responsible citizens. Now, the thing is, so who per se, would free a sika, not would be a bribia, because young credit rating record former, and yeah, young abra bought now the e levy barber to so. Adenti because there is over three, almost three billion Ghana cities I record to the presidency. Three billion Ghana. Inti te also by 75%. What also by 75%? I will say by 375 million dollars. 375 million. Save you and not at the presidency. You don't need three billion Ghana cities going to the presidency. Then now what are you Mr. Kufuado. And ne koso wo presidency. Deng na mudi sikani ye presidency ho. Mudi ye deng. Mudi shi usruku. Ana deng na mudi ye. Legislature. Leg, Ghana legislators. Ye wo 275 legislators. Deng na sa legislators no. Wo ye ma Ghana. Se se meno mo kasei. He. Ghana fui. Ye be to me afa. I install le Watson. IBM computer, our friend is Watson, no? Ah, aye, artificial intelligence, ah. Ebe ye, over 90% of young parliamentarians, no? Ye bet me replace one with Watson. Watson computer, ben we juma. Na, yen downscale. Ah, den ye here 275 parliamentarians, ah. Den we ye magana. One liability to Ghanaians, no? Ye over 100,000 cities every month per parliamentarian. 100,000 cities. Kona kubun kunta alana he. Enwe chi. Wa wa judiciary. Judiciary he. America ye 330 million people. 11 times the size of Ghana. Ghana ye 30.8 million. America wa 9 Supreme Court judges. E kufu wado ba nansi ye. Ghana niye wa 10 Supreme Court judges. E kufu wado. A point eight. Akaho, in to say, say Ghana, 30, a, a country of less than 31 million people, no, ye were 18 Supreme Court judges. Ding, ne how young? 18. Ding, na I think young now, just a cronger will be seen now, Ghana, and they won't see ye Supreme Court judges. Ding, tin ye were Supreme Court judges. A country of less than 31 million. 18 Supreme Court judges. Ka, ka, one Supreme Court judge, Biano. Liability, April hundred and fifty thousand dollars, hundred and fifty thousand cities a month. Kona kubun kunta he ne V eight ordered them ne bodyguards ne ne driver ne 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 krone ba deng inti ni yafa an extra eight Supreme Court judges. And nun kwan cheng se si amene mo kase ya wo thirty four eh wo friend deng ambassadorial post around the world. 34. Vatican City, 
a ewo room kra ye wo ambassador wo ho den na ambassador wo Vatican City ye magana mon kan kire ye nge aden ni ewo ambassadors wo ba bi ti se Malta nom ne eh, wo friend den Sri Lanka se eh, su Sudan nom ni ade den o kom no ye ne ade ba inti ne ye wo ambassadors wo Sudan it doesn't make any kind of sense so we we e levy what is this yes some wo uh, 58 uh, uh, diplomatic missions around the world. Diplomatic mission, no, and Kahun Fasuni said, We will trade desk, Eddie uh, income, commerce, a uh, Ghana. So, uh, diplomatic missions around the world, they are 58. Sika Beng, what the Brea Ghana. Mon country near here. A year crong waste of money and resource. Musi Muhu, he levy. Ye betcha must say, he levy, no, Munkona Munko, ye infimuamu for two. Positions now, more creative, who name Fasono, and Hona Munko, ye infi. Adeng na mo hao gana fo saa MPP fo. Deng na gana fo aye munti. Na de biya ye nchi ya se ye nchi ya se no. Saa position si na ye wese. Wo wo over 2,000 executive positions. Wo wo executive benefits ne perks. Wo tu kwang wo business class. Wo nya 4x4 no mani ade. Saa ni mani ne si wo yifi ho. Ana wo tel so. E no no be ma i levi no. Income from i levi ni ye be nye fi ho. Mroso mroso mroso. Deng ne se se ye kachire e kufu adu ne wo government. Se sa ade no, mun ko yi yin fi honom na mo bo gana fo ka unnecessarily. Na mo bo yi yi ne e yi na excavate sa u nyanku kwa adu miyen se ye yin sa unko ka ni yen nang ne ni yen fan nye si ka ni yen fan tu ye yi levi ka son. Mwa be kachire yin se mwa kwa shi wo excavate sa 85. Excavate sa ba kon ye over 150,000 to 200,000. Mwa sa an kwa shi wo na ka hon. Na Pan on away, ye zi. Cop no way, a tin way, ya no cop no so a wild bonaca home. Eh, a cufado and his government. Why? Gana fo. Yam penin de empenichna, ye levi no, one eye as a bash and one eye, while coffee scan was a ba. Yam pen. In a lay, walk when eh, yan mo barber coo ye be genome the name, say yer empenit, a cufado and his government. A ding. A ding. What's it? When uh, cluelessness meets unpreparedness, no. MPP, Infoni, now be home. Yabram, we're not going to take this, we're not having this. Mumfa, yam penine impenichina, elevenu, ye chia. Munko inko cut legislature, Munko cut executive, Munko cut uh, judiciary, Nasi can ambassadors, any uh, were friending uh, uh, ambassadorial post. Any uh, 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 diplomatic missions, Sanya many now won't cancel, no more reduce, no more for computers in your hair. Legislators are your work 275, no. You bet me the drone, drone, I replace you on. You're here 275, at the maximum four per region, you're here 64 parliamentarians, you're here 211 parliamentarians, no. Where your liability to Ghana at about 100,000 cities every month. Yen chawung in fiho. Come on, enough of this nonsense. Ye rim. Ye rim. I want your word in class symbol. Okay. Okay. So when we are in class symbol of knowledge, strength, adaptability, <laughs> energy, freedom, unity, hope, peacemaking, harmony, intelligence, Continue. power of love, strength. Said in class symbols when you know you be a bra, bo be a be our boy, yeah. Nah, the sign, I know a pepper, no. Na yet the aka and in class symbols in a home. Okay. Now Ghana for Tenacia who no se said the anana de lan kwaku for the ebu ne mind ye ni jeho and see this is the a din class symbol for failure. What? It's a free nerd call. Say din class symbol who spells him you know ya. A kind in class symbols. The president is now a free nerd call who spells him you know ya. A kind in class symbols of photo and a din class symbol for failure. You are a and I beg not you <laughs> I come to you.